Good evening and welcome to A Cook's Tour for this very special wine pairing masterclass. Recently, I met up with my friend and wine guru, Tom Gilby, to discuss wines from Argentina, to find out a little bit more about the mighty Malbec and to get his expert tips for wine and steak pairing perfection. If you'd like to find out more about Tom Gilby and his wines, then visit his website, tomgilby.com. Hello, a Cook's tourists, and um, well, welcome to this very special wine segment with my old friend, Tom Gilby. Hey, Tom. How are you, Charlie? Good? I'm, yeah, I'm exceptionally well. <laughs> and um, I, well, I'm so pleased to see you because we've known each other for many, many years. Um, and um, well, when Ryan and I were talking um, Argentina, and we were talking about the menu, and we were thinking about wines, there was only one name that came to our head, and that was this man here, Tom Gilby. Tom, why are you, why are you the man about Argentina? What is it about Malbec wines that makes you such a pro? Well, let's trek back, Charlie. You called me and said, we're doing an Argentina now. It doesn't have to be Argentina. Charlie said we could put other wines in for our Argentinian evening, but no, it's got to be Malbec. And I, I love Malbec because it's something that's really found a place in the UK wine world here. On most great restaurants, you see great Malbec. And Malbec is a little bit of, we'll talk about it as we taste, but France comes to, uh, comes to Argentina and does something that combines the juiciness that we all love from New World wines and the elegance, acidity and character that we get from, I think, some of the best of France and, and Italy. That's it. And Malbec has really found its place on the wine list, isn't it? It's sort of... It, own, it owns it, Charlie. It owns it. And you get that wine list and you're about to tuck into your ribeye and you're thinking, what wine should I go with that? And you scan down the list and you hop over all the great wines of the old world and you go, I'll have that Malbec. Partly, maybe, because it, you know you're going to be safe. Yes. But, but you're not just safe. It can be really... I'll show you these, Charlie. You get, they can be exceptional. So, okay. Exceptional wines over my shoulder here. Tom, let's start. And where shall we start? Well, we have two wines here, Charlie. So we're going from uh, some, the, the central wine making region of Argentina, which is Mendoza. And then you said we could bring two. So we've gone further south and we're in Patagonia, Argentinian Patagonia, for something that's a little bit cooler and perhaps a little bit more delicate and elegant. But. Uh, we're going to start in Mendoza with Safinia Malbec, the State Reserve. And uh, if I may, I shall pour you a glass. Well, I admire your wall of wine here and the, 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 the fact that the bottles are all empty. Have you been having a bit of a lockdown party? Lockdowns, yes. <laughs> I have indeed. Yeah, no, there's all sorts here. But uh, and we've, I've been running these wine tastings actually from here, which is my new makeshift office. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, been, it's, been, uh, it's been great. Now, let's um, oh, look. pour it. This is so we, steady hand pourer. This is so we don't spill it all over the place. So here we go with them. Um, look at the colour of, of these of these wines. Yeah. So it's, uh, well, the first thing is the colour. It's going to be dark, isn't it? Yes. So, um, so Charlie, let's have a, a, a look. Shall I tell you a little bit about tell what me we're everything. doing? Yeah. So. With a Malbec, you're going to get very intense colour. This isn't a Pinot Noir, this isn't a Gamay. And part of the reason we've gone uh, Malbec with the menu, obviously it's Argentina, but because we, we need something with a bit of guts. So steak, as Ryan will tell us, loves, uh, it, it oozes, it, it loves something to cut through the fat. So yes. it needs something with a bit of brightness of fruit and acidity, which Malbec does. So um, we should be getting, and we'll have a little sniff, we should be getting a really lovely, rich, blackberry, blackcurrant fruit on the mm. nose. So lots of lots of fresh fruit. And then when you taste it, um, we'll get really lovely silky textures. So not too much tannin. And actually, we don't want too much tannin. We don't, yes, there's other wines that will be wonderful with steak, but the beauty of our Malbec is the ripe fruit, the softness, the acidity, and the elegance of the wine that goes, I think, just really well. Gosh. And you're talking about sort of cutting through the fat too, and of course, we're going to be cooking with Picanha. Yes. And that is um, that comes from the rump, so there's plenty of fat on that cut, which is going to add to that delicious juiciness. Oh, let's have a go. Mmm. Oh yes, it's not bad, is it? That's oh, that's better than not bad. That's simply delicious. So this wine is grown at about thirteen hundred 
uh, feet above above sea level. It's okay. growing literally at the foot of the foothills of the Andes. Mm. And Argentina, it's hot, so so you need to to get actually the growing season to make really lovely Malbec. You need to go high. So for this wine, the, the, all these vineyards are planted high. It's all um, sustainably farmed, so it's nearly organic, um, and. Uh, and really, the, it's just beautiful, beautiful fruit. And they have a very, you know, very, very long growing season. It just gives that wine the elegance that mm. I think. Well, elegance is definitely the word I'd use to describe this. It is, isn't it? Mm. Bright Love blackberry it. fruit. Do you think it will go with the food? 100%. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be trying some of the dishes in development. And um, mm, I can tell you this is going to be spot on. So do you want me to tell you about this other wine? Yeah. Right. Park your glass there. Okay. And um, then, show the other Malbec we've got. And I'm I'm really interested to think to to see how this will go with the food and, and the subtle differences that this offers. So. And what differences will that be? Because we're, as you say, this is Patagonia, so we're going, we're going. I mean, it's hundreds of miles south. It's yes. a much cooler climate. Yeah. So and is it still high? Is there sort of elevation for for the vineyards? There is. This is about three hundred meters above um, above okay. sea level, and um, so you're absolutely right. And Patagonia is the region that is both in Chile and Argentina. It is Argentina and Patagonia, so it's about the southernmost point in South America that you can grow yeah. uh, grow wine and particularly grow Malbec because Malbec needs a bit of heat to get the color color from the wine. Sorry, color from the skins. So here you've got, um, thanks Charlie, you've got a wine that, if anything, it should be slightly finer, slightly more elegant mm. and have perhaps not quite the grip of the, um, the Mendoza Malbec, but um, still a really, really, really delicious wine. So again, yeah, the colour, you've still got the colour. And, and so this, this again mm. has a very, very long growing season. Um, mm. for Argentina. The fruit should be bright, it should be perhaps be slightly creamy. They use a little bit more oak on this wine for the fermenter. Uh, I was going to say, can I detect a little bit of cherry? Yes, black cherry. Black cherry. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess that's also right. the oak, is that sort of yeah. enhancing? Yeah. That? And what they do is they actually ferment part of this mm. in barrel and they also uh, age it in barrel. So it's kind of a little bit more oak. But I don't think, you tell me, I, I hope and I don't think it overpowers the wine. Because the trick, good winemakers yeah. should not overpower wine with oak. Yeah. The oak should sit beautifully integrated with the fruit. Now tell me, Tom, with, with, with sniffing wine, I mean, does it, do you want to get your nose right in there? Is that quite important? It's definitely, but... A good I inhalation. Think, yeah, if, we are, if we're tasting these wines, and I think really interesting with these two Malbecs, so the first thing to do when you swirl it around, yeah. is you'll see here um, tears or... or uh, Tears running down tears the side of Tears of Malbec jaw. Tears or legs. Okay. So that means, nice long legs. Yeah, long legs. And they basically, if they fall down slowly down the side of the glass, yeah. you've got a wine with big body, so okay. big extract. And, and you know, these aren't lightweights. They're 14, 14 and a half percent alcohol. Okay. So you know you've got a full-bodied wine. So they're going to in the morning. Yeah. And then, no, 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 no. It only hurts if you drink too much. <laughs> so, and then you have a smell. And have a good sniff. But it's the first sniff. That you're going to mm. you're going to get the cherry, mm. so um, or whatever the the dominant fruit or the dominant aroma is, and then when you taste the wine, okay, you're a pro, Charlie. You'll know this all around your mouth, and you'll feel on the back of your jaw any acidity there is in the wine, mm. and you will feel a little bit of acidity here. The front of your tongue, you'll get a little any any sweetness, and over mm. the top of your tongue, you get the texture of the wine, mm. and, and whether you like it. I'm dying to taste this. Well, I just tasted you, it. Yeah, you, yeah, you sorry, whilst you were chatting away, I just sneaked in and I had, yeah, I thought, oh, yes. Mm. Mm. And then when you're tasting it, Tom, you are throwing it around your mouth because you want to get all those flavours out, do you? Well, with the food that Ryan's cooking, yeah. this wine needs to, needs, need, it's got some work to do. Mm. And you need, I think, a really juicy flavours and wine. So we're going back to the start of what we were talking about, really, to, to go with that food. I mean, look, you'll tell me, the flavours that we're going to have on the plate are extraordinary, aren't they? 
and these will certainly stand up. I was expecting this wine, I was just thinking it's further in the south and Patagonia is a cooler climate, I was expecting it to be a bit lighter perhaps, but actually it's, it's, it's full bodied and it, there, there's definitely, the oak is lurking there in the yeah. background. It definitely, but it's integrated isn't mm. it? Yeah. And actually we think Patagonia is cool climate, but it's still, you know, it's still quite warm. Yeah. I mean, we think France is, is warm. France is not really warm compared to these kind of areas. But, okay. but Pat I, what I think Patagonia does is it just gives, and, and wine is relatively new to Patagonia. You know, it's, it, they've been in, making Fab wine in Mendoza for some time. Mm. But really, it, it's, it's relatively new to Patagonia. And that's just, you know, as the world is getting warmer, we're finding new places to grow really great wines. Mm. And if you think these wines, most of, you know, a lot of what was coming in from Argentina was really um, uh, Italian grape varieties coming in. So you saw uh, Nebbiolo, you saw Sangiovese. Malbec has actually originated from Bordeaux. So you've had, so that's the home of, of Malbec, as it were. And now Argentina have just owned it. They own it. You know, if anyone thinks Malbec, you don't think Bordeaux, you don't think, you don't even think France, really. You just think... Yeah. Argentina. And within Argentina, you have the differences of Mendoza, Patagonia, and all sorts. Oh, I think a trip to Argentina is on the cards. I think so, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, um, thank you. I'm going to put you on the spot now. Um, and um, two fabulous wines, okay? Um, and I'm hoping that some of our intrepid cooks at home have purchased both, and you're going to be having a taste off now and for the rest of the evening. Um, but for those who have just chosen one, gone, which one would you go for? I thought we weren't going to do this, Charlie. <laughs> I think if I was to go for uh, the wine that I'm enjoying tasting right now, the most is the uh, is the Soros from Patagonia, because it's got a little bit more finesse. But can I give you my answer once I've eaten Ryan's dish? You and and I think when I'm halfway through each bottle, I'll tell you. Perfect. <laughs> Well, Tom, thank you so much for joining us on A Cook's Tour. And, um, well, I hope everyone at home has enjoyed uh, this wine pairing masterclass. And um, you're ready for the cook-along. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
Good evening and a warm welcome to a cooked tour with Rocket and our first destination, the Basque Country. Good evening and a warm welcome to a cooked tour and to our next destination, the Grills of Argentina. My name is Charlie Grant Peterkin and I am here, like you, to learn from the Asador, Ryan Stafford. Good evening, Chef. <laughs> evening. Do you know what? You, you say that with a lot of pressure. I'm going back all the way to uh, Australia, to Outback now, where I didn't know nothing about what I was doing. I was a little bit nervous, which is similar today. Not really. You're in good hands. I'm good, how are you? I'm, oh, I'm extremely good, I'm bubbling with excitement. <laughs> um, wow, what a, what, what a cook along we've got installed tonight. So, um, the cuisine of Argentina is one of the most distinctive in South America, largely because it showcases indigenous cuisines along with a variety of European culinary influences that are so prevalent in neighboring countries. Italian is the most prominent, followed closely by French and in the far south of Patagonia, even Welsh. However, if there's one ingredient that is synonymous with Argentina, then it's meat. Meat is the pivotal staple in Argentine cuisine, the country considered one of the world's premier producers of prime cut beef. Meat rules here, not only economically, but also in the everyday life of the people. So, for this evening's destination, allow us to whisk you away to the grasslands of South America, to the pampas of Argentina, the land of the gaucho, and the home of the asado grill. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a masterclass in perfecting picanha. Ryan, have you got your Argentine tango face on? I'm a little bit nervous, honestly. Like, just, a, just the intro, the power of it. Of course I'm ready, Mr. Charlie. Good. Good friend tourist, partner in crime. We're gonna teach you guys everything you need to know about not just picanha, steak, garnish, everything. We're gonna take you there. It's let's, incredible. Let's do that and let's start by um, giving a quick menu overview. What are we cooking tonight? So, I said I was nervous, not really. Not short of confidence, are we, Charlie, really? Never short of confidence, And Chef just Ryan. to let you guys know as well, have you been to Argentina? And I've never been to Argentina. What What's, are we doing? What is the problem there? Well, you're in safe hands because I've been to Argentina in my mind, with people I know, just everywhere I've lived it when creating this destination. Um, you know, my family have been there, the flavors, the food stations, the events, Argentinian events I've done. I could have been there. I could have been there for months. I could have lived there. So you're in safe hands. And with that said, the menu's gonna be incredible, Mr. Charlie. And for you guys at home, we have got asado. Oh. Uh, asado, beautiful collection, an assiette, a plate, a plater, whatever you want to call it, a beautiful meat from HD Walter, absolutely incredible. We're going to start with that. We've got sausage, we've got picanha, we've got bavette. We've done a little bit of hard work for you. You're going to do a little bit of hard work, but most importantly, you're going to pick up the skills, mm. the incredible skills, the masterclass within this destination, which is cooking the picanha, the heart, the holy grail of steak in South America, most importantly, Argentina as well. Yes. So on to the next dish. To garnish with that, we have some beautiful saltwater potatoes. We're going to be replicating so seawater from Rio Halios, which is right down the southern tip, those beautiful grasslands that we talked about. Then we're going to go on to Buenos Aires palm and toast avocado salad. Mm. And to finish with a classic, it wouldn't be a Cook's Tour destination with Charlie, myself and the whole team if we didn't have a Ryanism to finish. Here it is. Torta, Rogel, collaborating with Pastelitos, which is a beautiful pastry dessert with a classic, what is the trifle to the English man and woman? Well, Torta Rogel is the number one dessert in Argentina. We're gonna do our little classic twist on that. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it, as always, yeah. I'm very excited. Well, that's gonna knock your socks off that pud, I can't wait. Okay, so as ever, um, 
cooks at home, a little bit of housekeeping. So you can cook now or you can cook later. And hello to everyone cooking on Friday. Great to have you on board. We have the live chat and Michael is there ready to answer any of your questions. So please do um, correspond with him and he'll get back to you with any questions you might have. Um, and uh, yeah, hit the pause button. We're going to be going along at a good pace, but if we are traveling too fast, then hit the pause button and then release at will. Uh, there is also the instruction booklet on hand. And of course, that has all the sort of the methodology for the cook along. So please do refer to that if you need to. Social handles. Cook with Rocket, OK? Get posting those incredible photographs. We love seeing all your wonderful uh, photographs of your creations. And of course, there's the competition um, to win a box to our next destination. So post away using the hashtag Cook with Rocket and tag a cooked tour. OK, um, ovens, do they need to be on? 170. 170? 170 Celsius, yes. OK, so ovens are on. And um, let's get cooking. Yeah, and I think, I don't know if you mentioned or you did or you didn't, Michael, if you miss it, because I talk incredibly fast at times, bombard Michael, get chatting, <laughs> get your Malbec, get your wine from Mendoza, wherever it's from, get supping and get tackling Michael, because he's got all the info and we've spent a bit of time discussing this we incredible have destination. So, should we get okay. cooking then? Yeah, first up, I can see some tatties. We are going to go straight into the tatties. So, a little bit of convo here about the tatties. Lots of convo. Should we keep it short? Yes, should, we, should, we, should we keep it to three hours today? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're almost a lot of tatty in the Dr. Deleche then. Okay, so what you want to do is to start, guys. So these um, Rio Halios, we're going to take you a little bit round. So we're going to go to Buenos Aires on the right. Is that correct? Yeah. Looking at the southern continent of America, we are going to go to Rio Halios. At the right down there, isn't it? Right to the <laughs> south of Patagonia. Right down, <laughs> right down there. Right down there we go. <laughs> and um, we've got some beautiful potatoes. So as always, we're working with incredible potatoes. Jersey Royals, English uh, producers are here, they're on our doorstep. Why would we put that carbon footprint and fly them all the way over? But we're gonna step into the culture of Argentina using some of fantastic kind of ingredients, but supporting our local uh, peeps as well. So we've got Jersey Royals here. Harry and I should say, I hope everyone's been good tourists um, and have uh, read up uh, your instructions before the class, uh, yep. because we should give those potatoes, if you haven't already, um, a little scrub. So, they're not um, going in dirty, full of mud. They're not going in dirty, <laughs> full of mud. So give, okay. uh, hit, hit the space bar if you haven't and give them a quick quick scrub and then catch up with us. But in they go. Into, Amazing. Into the cold water. So as you can see, beautiful, clean uh, potatoes, jersey rolls, a little bit of flaky skin on the outside, perfect. It's got that earthiness, that lovely kind of uh, waxiness that we want and depth in flavour. So, Rio Halios, why, why the potatoes from there? Well, just as I'm chatting and uh, moving away here, I'll explain. You need to get yourself You've got 400 grams of potatoes here. Don't weigh them out, we've done the hard work for you. Into 800 milliliters of water. Okay. Try and get a pan, this is a medium sized pan, that's my hand. I've got apparently not quite a man hand, not <laughs> quite a lady's hand, so somewhere in between the average hand, let's say. Um, medium sized saucepan, and that'll just cover, you're probably looking, a thumbnail, good two centimeters above. Now, Rio Halios, uh, they have papas, Arugadas, which is um, mm -hmm. the Canary Islands kind of nicked it way up here on another continent on, a, on the west coast of the African continent. And it's cooked in seawater, potatoes cooked in seawater. So we're going to replicate that. Do you know the salinity of seawater? No Google, no Google. I mean, no away. time, no time. Well, 35% thir per litre. So, well, 35 grams pretty much okay. per, per litre. When I was testing it out, I did 350 grams per litre in the development at HQ. Let's just say the potatoes are pretty salty. Still a hefty amount of salt. We've weighed it out for you. 35 grams. I mean, look at that. That's a lot of salt, isn't it? It looks like it, but what salty you've, got to, really is. you've got to remember two things that I'm doing here, Charlie, mm. and for you guys at home as well to take note. A root vegetable, anything under the ground, golden rule. If you cook it in hot water, um, basically it'll be mush on the outside and cooked on the inside. So we always start from cold water. Above the ground, peas, all these beautiful courgettes, very delicate, hot water, quick flash, quick cook, beautiful. Anything like a potato, parsnip, all that. If you're gonna boil it, sweet, celery out, you go from cold water. So we're starting with cold water mm -hmm. and we've got the salinity in there. You're looking 33 to 37%, so we've gone um, you know, just a little bit less than that. You're basically cooking in what would be replicated seawater. And it's just gonna penetrate the potato enough to season it throughout, so no salt added at the end. You'll see we're going to crystallize it on the outside. It's oh. going to be absolutely beautiful. But don't worry, all that salt generally leaves with the water at the end. Gosh, can't wait to see yeah. what happens. So just to recap, it's your 400 grams of Jersey Royals into the pan, 
800 mils of cold water and then the entirety of the salt, which is 35 grams of salt into that water. And you're popping, popping it on to... Uh, full heat. Full heat. Full heat, and we're going to shoot that straight up as fast as we can to uh, a boil. Once it comes up, we're going to simmer for 12 to 20 minutes. So let's sit in the middle at 15 minutes for this size of potatoes, which we've graded on the amazing team at Rocket and the Cook's Tool. Great. So let's, um, let's just wait for those to come up nice and easy. And just to finish the dish, he's like, he hasn't mentioned the Mojo Verde. Mojo Verde is just green sauce. It's a uh, mojo, mojo, mojo salsa, salsa mojo. Um, it go, you go around the world and you see this in lots of uh, Hispanic? Yes. Hispanic, Hispanic uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So basically you've got in there a little bit of cumin, you've got some garlic, mm. you've got some olive oil, you've got some vinegar, some parsley, some cilantro if we were in Argentina, but coriander to you and I. Um, and it's mind blowing. Guys, eat it all around the table tonight, the two of you, the three of you. Maybe the dog's getting involved because it's going to get garlicky. So that is the ketchup for the tatties. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that when we serve later because it's strong and it's meant to be. We didn't mess the recipe up. It's meant to be stinging, but also health benefits come with raw garlic. So enjoy it and let your body get nourished. So <laughs> on to the next dish we go. Um, Rogel. Rogel, yeah. Oh. We're going to do some dessert, mate. We are. So what we need for that is we need some sugar, yeah. so we've got caster sugar weighed out there. You've got the correct quantities at home as well. We need some egg whites. Do you know what that is? I do, because I've been doing my research and sneaking around and having quite a long chat to you about this recipe and these menus tonight. Deliciano. That it's is beautiful. Delicioso. I don't know, there's loads of words that my friend in the caramel world, it's, it's incredible, it's the caramels of caramels, dulce de leche, milk mm. caramel, as I like to call it. It's beautiful, and we are gonna move into this next dish. And then you've also got your, your, your pastries there as well. So these four elements coming together. Exactly. And then, not to forget, these lovely little flowers. So, without further ado, Charlie, we're going to Is this get... a bit where I'm sort of donning my apron and I'm going to give you a little bit of a help? Yeah. Hand. Do you know what? We need a mixing bowl. Oh, well, should let's we... just, should we just take something from the... Why don't you take that one? That, yeah, one that works, doesn't that, it? That does work. Oh, That's okay. what I love about the, uh, our, our head of creative and our creative department, the suppliers with all of the goods that we need, ready yeah, to go. Yeah, everything we need is just behind us. Charlie, I'm going to get you working now, so I don't know, start with one, you might need two. And for you guys, <laughs> it's perfect. So for, for you guys at home as well, a nice big bowl. The reason we get a bowl is, so we get, get going like this. Got a little bowl like that, we're trying to get air into the protein. So hold on, what are we making here? We're going to make meringue. Oh, the brilliant. Rogel Torta. 100 miles an hour, I'm so excited. Brilliant, so, we're making meringue. So basically, we're going to go, egg whites in here yep. and we're going to make a simple sugar white meringue and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a intro. Rogel, Torta Rogel is basically like the trifle to you and I being Englishmen. Yes. You go to Argentina, they're going to get two points for aesthetics. It's kind of like the, the lemon sorbet in Spain, spinning around under the dessert fridge thing. Every, everyone's been there. Would you like orange sorbet in an orange or would you like tiramisu that looks like tiramisu? This is one of those. It doesn't look great, but you eat it and they're getting 10 out of 10 for flavor. And that's, okay. that's why I've chose it. But we're going to switch it up. You've got two desserts in Argentina. You've got, let's, let's get doing this. Okay. And, I, and I'll tell everyone about it. You need to whisk this. Okay. And everyone at home needs to whisk it sideways and we're looking for soft peaks and now I'm going to start tapping in the sugar. I'm going to drink wine, look very comfortable. You're going to sweat and when you're on breaking point, I'm going to take over. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> but basically a little bit more, I mean, look how quick this yeah. is coming together. We are talking I about- I saw um, Angela Hartnett putting um, Stephen Lamb to work a few weeks ago. Yeah. When they were creating pasta together. Angela, good old Angela. We love Angela, don't we? And do, Stephen, do. lovely people. So basically, this is really simple. This is how we're looking. We've got seven pieces of pastry here. We've got two desserts in Argentina. One's called peslitos, which is basically fried or baked pieces of layered pastry. It can be a kind of filo-y, doughy, beignet, and it's just fried chunks of pretty much, or, or, or flat pieces or tarts of dough. So at Rocket HQ, the team's been busy. We have created some pressed, almost like buttery, light, amazing pastry mm, uh, centers that we're going to layer up in a second. Um, they traditionally use, in the Torta Rogel, they traditionally use uh, a sweet paste, mm. or they call it sweet pie pastry, which doesn't really sell it for me. So we've gone a little bit lighter, a little bit flakier, a little bit more delicious with the paslitos. 
kind of identity and then morph that into the other popular dessert, the number one dessert, the trifle to the Argentinian, which is the amazing Porta Rogel. You go to a family party, Torta Rogel. You go to the restaurant, what we have in, Torta Rogel. So we couldn't not do it, guys. And aesthetically, you'll see it, it's very simple, but it's incredibly delicious. Great. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So if we keep going on that, that's amazing. I'm going to start layering this up. So there's two of you at home. So this is just the egg whites that I'm um, that over there that I'm whisking at the moment. When does the sugar get added? Yeah, I've got that on right. Yeah, it's coming up. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you have a thing with your hobs. I have a thing with the hob. Don't I? It's like my go. world is perfect until I start working with that hob. <laughs> <laughs> just that one. We're back on it. This is perfect. This is perfect. Okay. So what, what is this stage here? What would you call that? So I call this soft peak. Very soft, soft peak. peak. Very it's the beginning peak. of the soft peak, okay. and that is where you kind of just go, and it just sits over but it moves and then over time it will disappear back into kind of a slightly lumpy flat. Okay. Soft peak is when you kind of ribbon like that and it just goes over and stays there. Okay. So as we start getting this, we're just going to so a little this sprinkle. this stage we start adding a sprinkle little of sugar. Bit. And the reason we do it bit by bit is so it doesn't get too uh, granulated and we kind of want it to dissolve and, okay. and yeah, kind of. So do I just want to carry on adding this slowly, do I? Yeah, but go pretty big on this. It's going to take, you know, a good kind of eight, Eight minutes, and I said I wanted to see you. Eight sweat. more minutes of this whisk? I think judging probably about six minutes left. Oh, I should go out of the Let's go. electronic chats. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start layering this up. So this dulce leche, guys, as always, get tasting this. Charlie, you want to try? Love to. Can I feed you? Is that okay? No. Come on, <laughs> don't be like that. Can't believe that happened. Was it? Mm. But it was worth it. Wow. Perfect. That is delicious. It's incredible. Oh. Absolutely incredible. And I love it. Can't believe you just fed me on the set. I'm just. Well, now, we're, now we've got all these amazing hunks of meat that we're using in chickens. I'm not allowed to touch you, so I'm at least going to feed you, Charlie. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a marry comfortable man. In safe hands. So, yeah, well, the thing is, you just had a baby, so you're just used to feeding at the moment, aren't you? I am, that's it. Plus, being a chef, you could call me a feeder. For, for the <laughs> nation, true. for thousands of people at events. A few guys at home, you know, I'm part of the feeding yeah, process. You are the feeder. So nothing wrong with that. So as you can see, I'll move that out of the way so you guys can see what we're doing. I just want to layer it up. Guys, don't 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 be hoping for the, the birthday cake you always wanted. This is gonna be very simple. As I said, presentation, even for how I'm doing, it's gonna be a one out of ten. Flavour is going to be 10 out of 10. Well, I noticed that you are keeping it sort of half a centimetre away from the that's, edge. Yeah, that's because the weight's going to press it down a little okay. bit. We want to use it all. We'll get a little bit elaborate as we get to the top. Oh. Just use your fingers as well as you go to kind of like support it. So everyone, you're not, you know, we're going to end up with a couple of pieces, aren't we? Okay. Yep. So do a little bit of concentration, a little bit of a skill tip. Any more sugar over here? Yeah, keep going with the yeah. sugar. We need okay. to get all that sugar in there. The sugar's going to add gloss, sweetness, and stability to the meringue. The meringue's a protein, and we're, we're, we're basically just putting air into it. The sugar's going to sweeten it, gloss it up, make it look really, really sexy, but also help stabilize the meringue as well. So should I just keep adding sugar? Keep adding sugar. Keep adding sugar. We're going to have this savory state around our chops pretty soon. Mm. And uh, we just want to get super involved. Super involved. I tell you what, Charlie, I'm getting hot just watching you. Just, are you, are you working for sweat? Yeah, well, I'm having to really concentrate. Uh, the thing is as well about this torta, people have been making it, don't feel underwhelmed by the size. It's caramel and pastry. You're going to eat steak. You don't actually want anything more of it. You want a sweet treat and a little bit of that. That's what I feel anyway. Maybe, uh, maybe you can let Michael know on the feed if you feel a little bit different. But uh, it's quite a rich dessert. And we're just making enough to, to wet the whistle a little bit, you know? Just yeah. make you satisfied, give you that kind of like couple of bites of chocolate or that scoop of ice cream moment after the big meal. People are like, I've used all mine, I've only done three layers. Slow down, <laughs> concentrate a little bit. Yeah, stop feeding the sous chef. Yeah, I said try it, not eat it. <laughs> it's not a buffet. Okay. Yeah, there'll be plenty of. Folk dipping their fingers at home, I'm sure. It's looking good. Can you see the gloss in it? Yeah, I can. And it is stabilising a little bit. And the reason you wait to soft peaks is so that the, the air's, the, you know, the oxygen's trapped in there. And you start putting the sugar in. If you go too early, sometimes it won't lift where you need it to. So, here we go. Last layer on. Slightly under, underwhelming in the height because it's a, it's a baby effort. It's almost like, it's like the biscuit you always wanted, isn't it? Yeah. You can just do another layer of caramel. So that goes on there. 
Torta Rogel. And if you if, if you kind of like, I've got a, a recipe book that features this at home. And if you look, if you go on to have a, have a, a nice little ping on the on the tinternet and have a look at all the variations, there's no kind of rule. So, I mean, I like that. The caramel's coming out. You can have the caramel oozing out the side. All about the flavour, as I've been banging on about. Let's get this cake done. And what are you going to do with this incredible meringue? The meringue's going to go on top. Yeah. And it's going to start getting a bit feisty. On top. Look at that. So guys, get your perfect glass, um, your glass cake stand out that you got bought 16 years ago that you never used. Tonight's the night. Flip it over and there yep. she is. If you haven't got it, get a sexy, sexy little, um, uh, get, get the egg white bowl and then tip it over <laughs> yourself. But get a bowl, tip it upside down, don't put it on a little plate. It's perfectly fine. It's going to get gobbled up fairly fast when you get your chops around it. So, a little bit of tissue, my egg white hand. Destroy the set while I'm at it. And back. Potatoes have come up. They're yeah, looking how they delicious. Doing? They're just about to start simmering. And that's it. We just want to let them go, let them go, let them go. And all we're looking for, we're just going to let those tick along in the background. We're just going to let them go until they are tender. Then we're going to take them out, drain them, put them back to steam in the pan and just stay warm. They don't need to be boiling hot. And they're going to crystallize up and give us that beautiful Rio Halios potatoes cooked in. Salt water that we want. Do you want me to take over a little bit? Yeah, go on. Why don't I tell you, I mean, my glasses are sort of slowly slipping down my oh, nose. Charlie, you've done such a good job. I don't know. I've done all right. I, I think I've, you know, I think I've done the, the majority of it here. What are we going to do with all this meringue? <laughs> I was going to ask Is you that what question. You well, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I think you're just really good at whipping. Like, we tested this. <laughs> We've got a fantastic chef called Philip Eagle, and, uh, and he's, uh, he, he was testing this with me, and it just kept, kept, kept whisking, kept whisking, but we, we reduced the amount and stuff, and it was perfect. So I think you're a master whisker. Well, there we go. So, so what can you do with the rest of this meringue? I can't believe all of it's going to go on top of this. Uh, just because we, 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 are, we are givers, and we like to be very, very generous, um, we need to... Um, just make some little kind of little paviola number, pa yeah. pavlova numbers. Put the oven on to about 80 degrees or something like that. Just let them tick over in the oven. Okay, just let fine. them harden up. Turn it off. Let them dry out overnight. You've got some pa you go. pavlova base for tomorrow. And um, I'll have an accounts meeting in a month or so and have to find up some avid reasons at what happened. But that's fine. It's a month away. I've got enough time to think <laughs> about it. So we're going to stop there. Okay. And here's some sugar for your coffee and tea in the morning. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. So the torta rogel. Here we are. Cacao nibs. Yes. If you've got any questions, Charlie. Mm. Tell me about cacao me. nibs. Cacao nibs. So, mm. Mendoza. Uh, can't remember. Is it the Andes? It's, uh, yes, it is. The Andes. They drop down. Chile, yeah. Argentina, right down to the tip. Volcanic? Now you're asking. Because we haven't been to Argentina, yeah. so we wouldn't know yeah. about that. Michael, you better help us out. However, Michael, maybe you can... Uh, yeah, maybe you can let us know about that. So basically, um, Kagawa, grown up in Mendoza. Herbaceous kind of crop. You've got chilies up there, lots of kind of uh, stuff growing for medicines. I wouldn't say it was quite Amazonian. Yeah. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of jazz going on um, in terms of what Kagawa. So that's why I'm Kagawa. It's crunchy. You've got flaky pastry, meringue, sweetness. You've got bitter chocolate on top. Yeah. Why not? Why not indeed? There's something oh, about beautiful. meringue. It's delicious, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, there's going to be a bit of a sort of a, a, a fine balance, isn't there? For just being a bit too heavy handed with the meringue and the whole thing could sort of collapse. So, just want to garnish this up. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. The blue of Argentina. Oh. I know. Always thinking, all over the set as well. Get fully involved. And then throw this all over your steak and your sausages. And there we go. Torta. Beautiful thing. Torta Rogel. Meringue for the next seven parties that you have. <laughs> Sugar for the tea and coffee. Don't say we don't look after you. There we go. Great. Thank you, Charlie. There it is. That's <laughs> triumphant. Perfect. So, should we, um, well, that, that's going to sort of, it's going to hang out there and we're just going to yeah. sort of enjoy it. Um, it and uh, we're going to move on, aren't we? We're going to move on to the, to the palm salad. Um, yeah. Potato check. Everything happy in potato land? Yeah, I think so. So let's have a little, a little gander at what's going on here. I'm going to get um, a big potato out. Get a tatty out. Have a look at it. Let's pop a potato on there. Okay. Let's pop a small potato on there. Do you know what? The thing about potatoes, it's like, it's like the carrot. The carrot world. Like, oh, your carrot's overcooked. It's a bit like my granny cooks it. You've got salad, 
a cooked carrot, and then you've got carrot puree, and it's a bit like potato. Mm. However, for some reason with jerseys, the cooking, I think you can just cook big and small like that, and they kind of just, they're just nice. You know, when you can crush between your, your tongue and your palate, and you're like, oh, Jersey Royals, I love this time of year. Mm. So I think we'll get one of each. Pop a spoon through it. That one's just cooked, so that's going to be that's still a bit no near, nowhere near. Sorry. So let's pop those in there. That's only been up to the boil, and the time starts when it comes up to the boil. That's only been boiling for I'd, I'd say five minutes or so. Okay, good. So great little check there. Very very happy. So everyone at home, check your tatties. I'm sure they're probably onto a the good palm place. salad. And onto the palm salad. Palm, check. Yes. King avocado, check. Beautiful king avocado because they are the king of avocados, this brand. We love it. I should work for them. They should be endorsing pain. There's lots of money the way I talk about them. I'm fascinated. We're going to open it. You do it. love a cook store. Gonna, uh, avocados on a cook We're going to open it in a minute. It's going to be bruised, yeah. and I'm going to have egg on my face, hopefully <laughs> not. So chorizo we, dressing. Chorizo dressing. Yes. Avocado. Palm salad. Hearts. What are you missing? I'm missing some watermelon. We are missing some watermelon. What have you done with it? You're constantly playing jokes on me, aren't you? I tell, I tell you what. We'll find the watermelon. The watermelon yeah. will come to set. But you'll have some watermelon at home too. So, but we'll start with the avo. So the thing is about this is, yes, yes, <laughs> win, 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 win. So, don't do that with your knife. I do it without realizing. Just get that stone out with a teaspoon would be the proper, proper way of going about it. And uh, what we're going to do is get a pan on for this avocado to start the salad. I'm going to show you something quite cool that I really like. I started doing it when I used to work in a private house. Mm. The mister loved avocados, avocado, prawn salad, all, all the traditional. And then one day he loved Japanese food. I said, I'm gonna do some avocado sashimi. I'm just gonna grill it. And then uh, as I started kind of researching new recipes, I was seeing it's actually quite a thing because you've got in this, uh, I've just put a pan on by the way, a non-stick pan if possible, because we're not gonna use any oil in this because avocado oil, you know, it's quite, it's kind of, I call it like the, 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 the butter of the fruit world. Mm -hmm. Lots of fat in it, and we're just going to char it up. It's got that sweet, buttery texture. We're going to char it up. It's going to add another layer of flavor that we talk about a lot. Let's get yourself a non-stick pan on. If you haven't got a non-stick pan, I would just dust this with a little bit of uh, neutral oil, like rapeseed, sunflower, vegetable oil, or olive oil, if you don't have any of the above. And then we're going to pop that into a pan. You need to make sure the pan's hot, otherwise it's going to stick. So while that's heating up, we will start to prep some of your ingredients. We should have a lovely, beautiful, rustic rectangle plate over there. That is one of my favorite plates. I do, moment. you're a big fan do of you, this. Do you have favorite plates, guys? Do you have favorite plates? I do, yeah. Do, do. you? Yeah, I do, I do. I, I have, also I have favorites. Yeah. What about, do you, have, you don't have like favorite children and favorite friends and? Oh, no, no, no. I have favorite chefs. I do. Is that bad? I'm, I, I'm, I'm real, I'm just being honest there. Not to say that you're not real, I'm just, just stating it. Look, but favorite plates. Favorite plates and um, watermelon on set. Watermelon just. What, what, just what, what is going on here? This is what is this? Compressed watermelon. Yeah. Is this something folks can do at home? No. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> so basically, there's a few things that are going to happen. I'm going to move that out of the way. I know my mother-in-law might have a bit of an issue <laughs> with that. I just can't see what's going on. Hello, Jill. So basically, um, watermelon. No, we can't do it at home, and that's why we just wanted to let you into the London bubble, a little treat, and compressing, we compressed the watermelon. Do you have any idea why we compressed it, guys? Do you? I'm gonna guess it sort of intensifies the flavor, does it not? It does. And you can sort of get flavor into it. There's about, there's about 35, 40% in some cases of oxygen in the structure of watermelon. Yeah. So you think about that, you've got a liter of Dinto or Robinson squash, whatever. You got 10% of this, and you put all the water in it diluted. Take it back down to the concentrate. Yeah. Is what we're trying to do in a simple analogy. Take the concentrate down, get rid of all the oxygen, weaken in the flavour, and take it back to an intense level. And if that wasn't enough, we've then popped in here so a little bit of cane sugar with some mint, some chili, and some lime. Why? Just because we can. Mm. So that's what we do. We're all about flavour. Have a little, have a little whack of that. Smell. Not the most glamorous packet, I know. God, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a bit of mojito -y yeah, thing going on. A nice you, texture. One could save that for a mojito. That would be quite a good idea. So, watermelon out, guys. I'm not going to be too mean, Charlie. So, what do you, what do you have, a, have a little waz on that. Oh. So, uh, don't eat the, um, the, the, rind. the rind. You can eat the rind. We make uh, watermelon pickle. Mm. That is intense. It's quite special, isn't it? Oh. Mm. Mm. Still got a crunch. Bit of spice. Oh, yes. 
It's really Lovely unusual. Lovely pickle of heat. And I love the There's unusual. A brilliant carry of all those flavours. You can really detect them all. Definitely. So my pan should be nice and hot now. Yeah. Avocado, open side, so exposed side down. Yeah. Leave the alligator skin on the outside. See what I did then, going back to Outback. Very nice. Alligator fruit. Like the way you, you know, you're sort of linking the tour destinations. Linking the tour. We've been on tour. We will talk about tour. So basically, here we go. Palm hearts. Again, really unusual. This is what I like doing, just bringing really unusual things to the table. Palm hearts are literally, they're almost like big bamboo stems. And they get yeah. hacked down. Sadly, uh, we use sustainable palm as well. But sadly, you know, like 80% of it, a bit like an artichoke, just disappears. I don't know where. Compost heat. Good solution. That's yeah. where it's gone. And um, we just want to cut this down. Okay, so... It, nice, sexy shapes. And you can see as well, that was the inside of kind of the plant. Okay, so you're sort of just cutting on the diagonal. It's like a sort of a leek or a banana, isn't it? You're sort yeah. of... Let's get a bit of height. Let's get yeah, Sheffy. Yeah, why not? A little bit of height in there. Let's move that in a bit. There just because we can. Move some of this out. And then we want to just get a little bit of height. And start mm. building the salad. We're about skills on the tour. We don't just want to take you to Argentina. Mm. Well, we're going to Argentina as well, aren't we? Kind yeah, of well. We're there, we're there. We are there. We're just going to get a bit of height, a nice foundation for the salad. We just want to start it's building it up. Bubbling. That's fine. Bubble, what, bubble. What this? Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. Happy with that? Happy with yeah. those? Yeah, these go real quick, by the way. Okay. Oh, right, thanks. Thanks for that. That's perfect. Is that okay? That's how you want it? It's meant to be like that. Toasted. Perfect. Grilled. So there we go. Avocado, really that quick. My super hot pan. I kind of want to just press it down a little bit. Don't mush it. Okay. We'll press it down a little bit, you can see the smoke, that's what we want. Our studio never wants smoke, <laughs> do they? But I, I want it, that's what matters. The studio I'm the, is rather I'm the chef. Smoke. Here we go. So, nice bit of colour, just press it down. So in, that's what we're looking for, we are looking for colour, we are looking for a bit of char. You've got this beautiful buttery, almost, not pickled, but it's got this mm. fresh wateriness in there. You've got this really sensational kind of zingy watermelon, buttery bitter, sweet, and you've got three massive flavours all there fighting each other saying, hey, I'm not your average Joe, I'm the new salad, I'm the salad that you want. And um, that's where we're going with it. Really unusual salad, stand next to the steak, really bold saying, yeah, yeah. this is it. And, and avocado and palm, I didn't mention, are two of the most used, you know, um, for, for their versatility. Versatility? Yes. All the way throughout, you have an avocado salad or a palm heart salad. The watermelon, never seen it before. Just like doing it, came across the idea, uh, started using it in a few things, and they usually use a, a fruit, whether it be citrus, which we've done on the tour quite a lot, mango, which we've done on the tour before. So I thought watermelon, another great fruit from South America. Why not? And just cut this into chunks, cut it into slithers, whatever you want. I'm not going to eat it, but I'm sure it's going to be delicious. And you just get stacking. I your love salad. the way too. You, you know, you said build a salad, and I think that's so true that. You know, too often we just sort of throw everything into a bowl don't yeah. you? and then just sort of throw dressing Peas, and give it a toss. carrots, beef, yeah. gravy. Seen yeah. it before, haven't we? Just switch it up a little bit. Seen it all before. Good colours, chef. Good colours. Good colour. OK, what are you doing here? So, the avocado. Just scooping it out. Scoop it out. And have a little, have a little go. So actually, when you say it's sort of, it, it, it's grilled avocado, and really you've coloured it, but actually... Yeah, toast. I just want to say a bit of toast on the outside, but yeah, is. warm avocado is quite a strange mm. experience. You know, you look at that shocking lime, kind of a luminous green against the viciousness of the red, pink, and the compressed watermelon, and then a the little kind of like, hey, I'm Mr. Boring at the bottom. That's got loads of texture and loads to add to the salad from the palm heart. But something's happened to the flavour there by cooking it. It's, yeah, it's, changes. Uh, it to, changes. It actually sort of becomes a little creamier if that's possible. I'm not Heston, so I don't know what. Okay. But something happened. I love it. And actually, the, 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 the taste of the char or the burn yeah. um, is, is, is lovely. And it's delicious. Oh, I'm going to get myself a little bin colors. over here so I don't keep, just keep running off. Yeah. So building up I've got there. a bin over here, Chef. Is that, is that helpful? Be, that would in be incredible. I don't know why I've got the bin. I thought you were just getting me back from making you do all that whisking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do like to get your work in, Charlie. You do. Um, and so this very vibrant looking salad is all going to be sort of brought together with... Um, with a vinaigrette, but not any normal vinaigrette. It's got some, it's got some we, trees we, we don't like to do normal too well. Yeah. So what's, what's the story we, behind we, we the like vinaigrette and, and why this dish? So basically we're talking, we're going back to the asado, which we is a, you know, the, the main kind of uh, asset, focal point of this, yeah. you know, it's a steak masterclass. And you, um, you see on the asado, you see steak, you see chops, you don't see burgers or hot dogs, that's all North American and yeah. stuff like that. You see steak, you see chops, you lots see- Lots of ribs, don't you? Lots of ribs all hanging and mm. stuff, big hunks of pork. 
but also you see the spicy sausage, and that's what we've done, which we'll come to the chimichurri sausage. And I thought we've got we've got the beef sausage covered. Let's get it in there. Let's yeah. get. I literally made it up. Do you think with cookery, it's quite important to you know you've got sort of four or five dishes to sort of link the flavours, as well as have contrasting flavours. I don't. I don't know if you need to link the flavours, but you need to think about the foundations of what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. And you've got a big steak here. The steak says, hey, "I'm really bold." So you need Mr. Mustard to come into the equation. Sound like I'm talking to my two-year-old daughter, <laughs> but I hope you understand, guys. And yeah, I'm big English mustard, and I'm bold as well. And then you're like, I need a big, strong jus to go with it. And I think when you're doing a steak, I think what I can say is you need other things to stand up next to it. Okay. You wouldn't be putting a probably tomato salad with steak. I think that's more fish, it's more chicken and stuff like that. So did that answer your question? I'll just go off on one again. Oh, it answered it. It answered it. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so here we go, chorizo dressing, and what you've got in here is you've got some incredible, incredible mm. um, Spanish chorizo uh, with some toasted rosemary. As always, get your chops in there. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm trying sort to of get too much here. oil because the oil will will look great on the plate and it will carry with the things on the plate. Don't worry if it looks a bit too oily, but uh, if there's some oil left in there, that's fine. So you've got salt, shallot. Again, we've got some Malbec vinegar in there. We've got some rosemary, some parsley, the shallots raw, some garlic, some, and it's all just settling. Very, very good, it's delicious. But what is nice mm. is getting some of that oil and then just kind of getting really chefy along the edge. Maybe, On your maybe, maybe, plate. maybe you've come back in for the shed, from the shed with your canoe now <laughs> if you want it to be really official. Well, just sprinkle it all around the canoe if you've got one like I have here. And there we go, voila, I tell you what. Get some of these little bits of herbs as well. We so that, cilantro, if, cilantro. If, if we were there, as I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna get some of the coriander which you guys have got and just pop this on. Absolutely oh. delicious. I mean, look at that, Charlie. Happy days. I just eat that on its own. Yeah, I really like would steak. Yeah. So put the steak in the fridge. <laughs> got dinner. One of those moments. Right, that's it. That's it. Very good. There we are. Okay, so, brilliant. So we have it. So we've got the just as a recap, spuds are on, Jersey yep. Royals. We'll have a little check of those, but we, I've showed you how you're going to check them. So I'm just going to use some scissors because they're to hand. I'd say another five minutes on those and I'll show you what to do. If yours are done now for some reason that you're going a lot faster and they're nice and tender, you just want to drain the water out of those, put them back in the pan and put a, uh, put a lid on. And they're going to steam dry and have salt crystals around them, which is what we're looking for. Brilliant. I'll well, show you that in five minutes. Okay, drum roll. This is the main event. This is the main event. Yeah. We're going to need some bits. We're gonna like, do, do we need a drum roll? Are we going to do a little? Yay. Steak comes in. There we go. It deserves it. Land it deserves the, the uh, amplified moment of the steak. Now, looks like a lot of steak. That's right. I don't know how we do it. Again, Paul Daniels, Debbie McGee. <laughs> Debbie McGee, Paul Daniels. Get out of here. Okay, I'll be Debbie McGee. I like Debbie McGee. 1984 Debbie McGee, though. Debbie oh, McGee, okay. in, general. in general. Okay, back to the steak. So the reason is you've got 500 grams of meat here. It's pretty generous, pretty incredible. Charlie always says, mm. you've got to make sure it's got that moment, got that moment. So that's not an impression of you, but a lot of pressure the chef gets to deliver with the team. And we tested this and we were very, very happy. You're not getting two picanha. You'll be getting some bavette in Buenazette, which I'll come to in a minute. You're getting some sausages, chimichurri, designed by us. We'll talk a little bit more about it. Maybe you can prompt me in a little while. Yep. Beautiful beef sausages. And then we've got picanha. Now the reason we're using picanha is, which is Brazilian, <laughs> However, it's a bit like the sirloin. Is it French? Is it strip loin in America? Is it British? Is it Irish? Is it Scottish? It doesn't matter. It's a steak that we kind of share with different names. And picanha around South America is the sirloin to the South American cook. So there we go. And as usual, because I've been banned from touching, I haven't really been banned. I can touch him if I want. He's a delicious man, but we just thought props work a little bit better. This is a picanha. Tell you what, turn around. We can still get you involved. This is where it comes from. Eyes on the prize. What are you pointing to? It comes from the rump, oh. darling. There's got to be a below the waist kind of rule, hasn't there? Where <laughs> like, I've just got to put, put the rump where, where, where it's from. The picanha sits on the rump, kind of mid. You've got the actual rump muscle on top. You've got what we call the heart barrel muscle sat underneath it. And they take this because the Argentinians and Brazilians, they think it's absolutely incredible and I agree with them. Mm. Now, with that said, you've got this beautiful aged marbling. We've talked about the creaminess and the fat. And that's it from behind. It's kind of a bit of a triangle shape, 
let's pop that over there. And, and the reason you're also showing that is because we've got different cuts. Well, it's the same yep. piece. But you tell you what, I'll bring it back just for that. It's a very valid point. So pretty much we are going for, we are going for Charlie, mm. one, one cut of meat. So if you're at home thinking he's got four pieces, that's what you're going to receive in your box. However, this is from there. Yep. And the reason I'm showing you that, which I'll come to in a minute, as you get thinner on the state, they start cutting on an angle so you get a longer piece. Mm. The reason I'm showing you that is because this, we're gonna render for four minutes on the fat side. Render means put it down in a cold pan like so, and render it so the fat gets crispy. And then we're gonna go three minutes to four minutes on each side for a perfect kind of medium, more, more to medium rare. And this one's gonna go two minutes each side with four minutes on the fat. Hit the pause button now, because you've just said, what did he just say? Go back. <laughs> have a look and concentrate because it's going to be a very important part. Would you agree? I would indeed. I'm going to yeah. put this down. Put your rump away. Get my rump away and we're going to get cracking. Let's get cracking. And steak. where are we going to start? Oh. We're going to start with the sausages. We are going to start with the sausages. Mm. So what we're going to do is, I might, just because we've got the pan here, um, just get cracking. Yeah. So get that nice and hot. Yeah, get so the pan, big saucepan, completely dry, no fat, no nothing in it. And you're going to get it. Dare I say blue smoke? Yeah, or blue smoke. Not quite. Um, no, not quite, because have you ever heard bangers? Bangers and mash? Yeah. Go and tell me about it. Do you tell me all about oh, why they're called bangers? Because they bang. Exactly. Well, back in the day, you used to put them in a hot pan and they just bang and they'd explode because they're, they're hot fat and meat in, in, in there. Um, and you just need to be a bit gentle with them. So okay. we're just going to heat the pan a little bit and go in with a touch of oil. Any oil will do. Any oil. Thank you, a bit of sizzle, sizzle, yes. bang, bang in there. As you know, I very thoroughly enjoy that sound uh, to a chef. It's good, and don't worry, um, this sausage in particular has got some chimichurri garnish in there, mm. which is your shallot. It's got some pepper in there, yeah. uh, red pepper in particular. It's got some parsley in there, garlic, red wine vinegar, etc., etc. There is pork in it as well, okay. because uh, beef's quite fine and the fat's quite creamy and it wants to run away and pork just stabilizes it. The fat. 10-20% of it is pork and it makes for the good eat. That's why pork sausages are the best sausages in the world. Yes. So we're getting the best of both worlds. Authenticity, also with a balance of what we're trying to do. And what are you looking sausage. to achieve on there? Just, we're just trying to get the cooking started and a little bit a of bit colour. Of colour. Yeah. And we'll start chatting about um, these. I'll tell you what, we'll actually drain our potatoes is what we'll do. Charlie. Okay. So fishing around, if you would be so kind, see potatoes as well, I'll just pop them on there for a minute. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, if I pop them up like that, you can see a few of them have decided to crack a little bit. Can you see that? Yep. That's fine. I really like to eat my jerseys like that. Yeah, yeah. It starts really, sort of blistering really cooked and through. That's not hot there. If you'd like to take that, drain it over that and just make sure that all the water disappears. Yep. But the potatoes remain in the pan. Okay, chef. Yeah, and then we're going to steam dry them and they're going to go a little bit salty. And the sausages. Yeah, a bit of a steamy facial there at the same time, but that, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know I like to look after I'm you. I'm okay with that. You know I like to look after you. So the, the sausages as well, we're just trying to get a little bit of colour just to start things off. Yeah, exactly. That's great. So we're just going to leave those now just to dry up so you, over here. Off the, the stove. Off the heat. Off the heat. Yeah, off the heat. We don't, we don't need them on the heat. Um, and they're just going to dry up and get a little bit of salt on them as well, which, yeah. will, which, will, which will make them look amazing, yeah. With um, just lid off as they are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the sausages as well, you can see as well, beef sausages like that, they colour up really, really quick. Mm. So a little bit of colour on there. I love, I love it that you, 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 you've been speaking to our friends at HG Walton. Yeah. Got them all excited about this destination. And I mean, how did the sort of the, you know, making of a cook's tour sausage come about? Well, basically, we went, we went and seen them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you remember way back in Texas. Yeah, I do. We went and seen them, the lovely Charlie down there, Claire, Adam, the, the Walter family, and, and everyone else that's involved. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Amazing. And they, um, they just want to get involved. So I told them what I needed. I said, hit me. This is what I want in it. And we just worked together really, really closely. And they developed. Great. They, they develop, yeah, they, they've worked with us very, very closely for a while now, and they're, um, they're incredible. So they, we, we, we pitched my recipe, they worked with it, did, did what they do very well. Yeah. And there we go. And a few samples later. 
a few samples yeah, later. Sausage. So don't worry, as you can see on here as well, the sausage is starting to come out. And again, if you start looking and researching, I love those bits. Down yeah, there. you see, they the kind of got those like little uh, roast dinner. You know, you do the little uh, meatballs, just pull that sausage meat. Thank but you. don't fear it. We're not like I said, we're a sado grill here. We're in the back garden. There's palm trees everywhere. We're drinking out of coconuts, and we're in um, you know the, the sunnier north side of Argentina. It's summer and sausages on a barbecue, and it's not about looks, it's about flavour. So pop those, there. we'll just pop those back there so you can see. Got some nice little bit of colour, it's just going to start everything off, straight into the oven, and they're just going to tick along until the end. There's quite a bit of fat in these as well as a good sausage does uh, does have. And you can 12, 15 minutes, make sure it's nice and cooked through. Cool, now, so that's in at 170. 170. Yeah, we've got a nice hot pan there, which is very, very important. So we're going to go for Kenya. Should I cook them both? To show everyone? Yeah, why not? What do you think? So yeah. I, I, I think that, a little bit of a show off, I don't know if you know. Yeah, okay. You, you've sure, seen yeah, that? Yeah, so yeah, I think we should go. That. We've got a bit of sausage fat in there, which is great, because it's that beef oil coming out of there, a little bit of pork fat. So you want to go skin side down. So like that, I'm going to render that. That fat is like, oh, all that fat, I don't eat fat. Render it down and you will. Delicious. Okay. So I'm going to go skin it's side. Straight in the hot pan. Straight in the hot pan. It's not, it's not blue smoke. That, that's from the oil that you see in the smoke. We just want to render it down. There's a lot of fat there. And there's a lot of elasticity in the structure of the the um, the fat. So it's almost like a bit of paddy whack, almost like uh, under the fat that's going to curl. Don't worry, just uh, as it's curling up, we're going to go for about three or four minutes with that. And what does the fat do by rendering it down? Is it is it sort of adding flavour or is it just um, moistening? Yeah. Well, the thing is about it is I'm not a big fan of eat. I'm not a big fan of eating mm. in the ribeye fat, the eye. Yeah. Bone marrow and stuff like that. I love the flavour, you know, chicken, pork belly. Pork belly's good when it's slow cooked and the fat's dribbled down and basted and caramelised and got that roast chicken, crispy bacon moment. But does anyone like eating jelly pieces of fat? Not really. No, so not you want to render it down, all the flavours in the fat. The protein doesn't actually have a lot of flavour. So the fat is the flavour. So the more you render it down, the more the steak cuts in the flavoursome bit, the more it kind of gets a little bath in the magic. I see. So that's why we render it down, kind of cook it in its own fat, if you like. Got you. And um, is there ever a case to salt the fat first or salt the meat? Yeah, you, I noticed there you yeah, didn't Yeah, you do can anything. do. You can do, but just bring in my fine specimen Yes. from HG Walter. It's been aged. It's got that creaminess that we spoke, we spoke about. Confidently just ignoring it. It's fine. <laughs> it's steak. We're getting aggressive. We'll see you later, steak. No, it just wants to render down three or four minutes. Yeah. So that's fine. It's just ticking along. We've got that creaminess here, and the creaminess talks about diet, you talk about it's grass fed, you know, if that's white and pale, could have just been eating, uh, you know, grain, just like any random grain to fatten mm. the beast up. But that's not what we use, it's not what we're about, it's not what I'm about as a chef and not what we're about at Rocket and the Cook Store. It's a really slow growing, you can tell that because the layer of fat's quite thin. It's a healthy, healthy beast. The creaminess says that it was slow grown and um, also the diet and also as it's aged, it goes a bit creaminess. So, I mean, what, what would you not? Want out of that? I love everything about it. It's incredible. And I know that um, one of the really important stages of cooking steak is also the resting of it, isn't it? Yeah. And have you got a trick up your sleeve to show us this evening? I have. So let's let's crack on with that. Um, did I have a tray that I put the sausages on? I tell you what. Maybe I could have that um, oval I think rustic there. I have now. You know what? I used to work with a fantastic chef. Don't know if I told you this story. Fantastic chef when I worked for. Jamie Oliver, just before yeah. he set up Barbacoa, which is sadly closed uh, for, for a couple of reasons, but a fantastic Barbacoa, Spanish for like mm. almost like barbecue, is incredible. And he said to me, Ryan, the difference between steak at home and steak in a restaurant is two things. Well, three things, obviously the obvious quality and, and diet of the animal, but marinating before and what he called a second marinating process, which is what I'm going to show you, which is the rest in bed. Ah. So it's incredible. And uh, when we were chatting about this, show, I know you're quite excited about learning all things. Now, we basically want to create, if you'd be so kind just to get a little bit of rosemary, yep. throw it on there, and we've got a beautiful Melbeck and olive oil, a little bit of sea salt and pepper. That's why I'm not seasoning the steaks. Like this? Yep. And just do this. So just smell it. Yeah. Mm. And then what the steak's going to do from the heat is open all the pores. Like we're, we're at the gym and we're sweating, our yeah. pores are opening. And then so you're going to go, you, can, you don't have to beat it up. I'm doing what the heat's going to do. Getting all that on the mic, yeah? Getting it all on the mic, it's good. <laughs> now smell it. Oh, wow. 
intensify. intensify. It's like you just it's fell in head first into the rosemary bush mm. and you're there. And that's what the heat's going to do. It's going to sit on that herb. It's going to open it all up. So you've got about three, three or four sprigs on there, breaking it all up. Just have a little look. How's your render? Yeah, it's good. So you can see that beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. It's, sort of, can, it's almost duck breasty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you can see all that fat there. Just be careful. I mean, I don't really feel anything from, well, from the head down, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, on, on the hands, really, I've got that kind of like chef kind of uh, touch. So Are I don't worry right about... over here. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I don't worry too much about the on fat. The cam. But you might want to um, take the fat onto a plate and just drain the excess fat off just in case it's smoking a little bit at home and the extractor fan's not coping. But yeah, you can see there, feel as well. So look, getting crispy and dry, mm. and that's because it's aged, good quality meat. You can see that happens very fast. Mm. So that's water in your pan and all this jazz, like the bacon with the white stuff. Yeah, not good. Just, no, not good. It just shows that you've got a cheap So product. are you sort of halfway there on that, do you think? I think we're almost there. Almost that's, there. Yeah, it's probably had a, a, a couple of minutes. I'm just going to get a little pan here, as I just explained to people, and I'll just show you. I'll tell you what, we can use this little pan here. Just pour off the excess fat. Be careful, that's hot fat. Okay. Probably looking 200 Celsius up yeah. on that. It's like sticking your hand in an oven and saying it's okay. It's not okay. We're going to go on this one, two minutes on that side. We're, we're going to go three minutes each side on this, and we're going to go four minutes each side on this. Okay. Just letting it go, doing its thing while we're chatting away. Yeah, I've got my eye on the clock over there. Okay, that's great. So if you could prompt me, that would be amazing. Yeah. I'm going to say it, I do love you, Charlie. <laughs> Honestly. You just sew me back together. I sort of falling apart slowly and you just say, I go, no, Ryan, are you going to do this? And I appreciate you, mate. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's what I'm here for, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, shallot. Why shallot? Because it's savoury. You've got this perfect perfume, really lively kind of, you know, they use rosemary in air fresheners, they use it in perfumes as a distilling process to start base of perfumes. Leave all the skin on. We're not uh, eating this, it's fine. Great. Shallot goes in. That's the savouriness that you're looking for. That savoury moment that an onion gives. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. Leave the skin on. Why? Because we can't be bothered peeling it and we're not eating it anyway. Why waste time? I get it. Imagine I get how much it. time in my life I would have wasted doing that. <laughs> Think about the big picture, guys. A little bit of chili. Why? Just because. <gasps> I just forgot. The Romero pepper. Quick, get it in the pan. Get it in the pan. Drop the mic straight in. That's what they do on the asado. They have all the onions lined up, grilling. They have all the peppers just chilling. Absolutely incred. Let's get that in there. And again, let's get this dressing on there. So this is what I talked about. If you're marinating your meat before, which you've got a good quality piece of meat, you don't really need to, but you can do if you want. But this, Melback, Melback? Melback. Melback. In Manchester, maybe, at the off-license. <laughs> so we've got Melbeck. Uh, vinegar, it's just olive oil, salt, pepper. Have a little waft of that. Mm. Amazing. The second marination, the third the stage. Second marination, the third stage. You've got the chili, it's fiery, it's savoury, it's vinegary, it's perfume, it's got everything. That steak gets on there and it's all just coming alive. The lights come on, the stage is lit and the steak's just going to go all the way up a level. To a new level. So that's there. Um, we'll come back to talk a little bit about this, um, this beautiful piece of meat about in a minute. Better. How long would you say that's had in there? That's had two minutes. Okay, that's cool. Is that cool? Yeah. It's got some good colour on it. Yeah, it has. And colour's coming from that fat as well. So I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. Yeah. Looking for a little bit more heat in there. I mean, I like a really rare steak, but I think this steak eats quite well at a medium rare to a medium. We may, do you know what? Looking at this steak on the, on the chunky bit, I'm actually going to go four to four, yeah, four, four, four and a half minutes aside. Okay. And I'm going to go three and a half minutes aside on that one. Well, I reckon you've got another minute on, on, on this one. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Steak masterclass. Mass is there a way that you can determine um, the cuisance of um, a steak by using your hand? Yeah. Is that a leading question? Yeah, it's a true thing. So, hand out. Yeah. So, just, just one. So, yeah. So, this here. Yeah. That's rare. Halfway in is medium. And all the way in, the mini chicken fillet appears. That's medium well for people to say. It's a, but it's a good guide okay. to go with. So, we're looking for that. Exactly. So, okay. let's just have a little look here. So, not so much cross-contamination, but I can, I can actually uh, feel through this. Let's put, uh, you've got a plate. Maybe that board, the board that it came on. Yep. So I'll just show while we wait for that steak. So if you just press, not with the shrizo spoon, kind of leaves, you can't, you, I don't know if you can see it there, but it leaves an indentation. Mm. You see the spoon mark? Yep. 
So as you cook it and the muscle gets tighter and contracts, gets tighter and tighter, it becomes more of a bounce. So it does take a bit of experience, guys. It really does. It takes a little bit of practice, but you know, it takes a bit of arrogance and it takes a bit of confidence and it takes a bit of getting into the job and getting involved and going, I knew I'd done that a little bit. Okay, on time to flip. Okay. I knew I had left that a little bit too late. And hey, listen, you've learned for next time. That's just the way it goes, unfortunately. We learn from our mistakes. We do. So we'll flip both of them. Well, no, not this one, this one in a minute. Yeah. So have you had a flat iron steak as well before? I and they, when they put the, 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 the iron on it as well to press it in yes, so it gets yes, a yes. nice color. Um, this works very well like that as well. Yeah. Just like put idea. a couple of bottles of wine on top of it. Are okay. We, are we on to wine today? Ooh, we are on to wine. Are we? But I'm just holding Yay. it back because I don't want you to start getting a little bit lightheaded before we've actually got through the masterclass. <laughs> Let's have a little look at our sausages. Sausages are looking. Sausages are looking good. They're pretty dapper. Along. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about the bavette. Yeah. Keep nipping over here. God, I'm loving the deck today. Oh, We're there, aren't we? Ahead. I love it. So the bavette, Buenazette. Why? Well, why not? It's a plater, assiette, steak masterclass. You've got three cuts. You've got your steak sausage with chimichurri, which is beef and pork. And then we've got the bavette. So the bavette is almost like a bit of skirt muscle. It's a beautiful uh, textured. Uh, muscle. Mm -hmm. It almost helps. Um, the onglet is central uh, on all fours, allows the animal to kind of move, and the uh, bavette kind of runs inside the rib cage, kind of doing a bit similar, kind of down here, holding everything in place. So beautiful, stretchy muscle. And the reason we've cooked it is because it's one of those that cooks. You need to be quite perfect. Is that another minute? Do you think on that? Stick? Yeah, you've had a minute there. So it's. Um, it's just one of those steaks really that, you know, I've been to a restaurant a few times with Bavette and it's been cooked and sliced for me because you could cook it perfect. It needs to be sliced across the grain. And again, all those mus muscular fibers going that way, you want to cut that way across it. Really, Reason really. Being. Because if you go with the fibers, the teeth. We talked about the what panda. When was the panda chewing? <laughs> that. Uh, I think uh, the panda was in Vietnam. No, in Vietnam, 90, 90, no, 95% of your life just chewing, no thanks. You want to live a little, you know, so let's listen to what's being said here uh, and, and just cut it across the grain all the time. You've kind of done the big chop that your teeth don't have to now. Okay. So incredible. So let's, um, as we get to the end of that, let's pop this. Should we pop this in? Yeah. Let's pop it in. As you can see, just put it on there for the guys to see. You can see those fibers. It's fabulous. Just running down here. Smell that. And for you guys at home as well, get, mm. get smelling that. So this is our team at, uh, at and, um, Rocket What is the marinade? So we've got a buenazette, which is when you burn butter and you yeah. take it to a buenazette, so it's burnt hazelnut almost. Yeah. And it's where it takes it to a nice caramelly, aromatic, delicious. It just goes well with it's bold. Again, those bold flavors we're talking about. So let's turn that pepper over. Yeah. Pepper in the steak. You're running out of pan space. Never. More meat never, never. pan. So we'll okay, probably so squeeze that all. So that this is cooked, there. guys. This is kind of like a, a, a medium. And we're just going to give this maybe a minute and a half each side, okay. just to heat it through. You're not trying to cook this, it's cooked. We've done the work for you. How far do you think we are on this one, Mr. Charlie? Um, yeah, I think you're about two minutes through on this. both now. So we've got one more minute. Have you got any yeah. more questions about steak? Anything we need to know? Well, um, with the bavette, you're, going, you're just going to throw it straight in the pan. That doesn't need any resting time, does it? But the pecan, no. you're going to rest on the bed for, what, five, 10 minutes? What is yeah. the rule about resting? How long for? The thing is, I have this rule that anything over 500 grams, which is a coda buff, you know, the beef chop, yeah. so anything over 500 grams needs 10 minutes to 25 minutes. Your roasting joint, one to two kilo, half an hour. Okay. Your 200 gram steak, 10 minutes. You kind of want me and you kind of like holding a load of, I don't know, imagine throwing me in the oven pretty much, tensing yeah. at times, so no. Very. Throwing me in there, I'm going to scream, curl up, whatever, it's quite horrific to think about. However, eventually I'm going to get it out and relax because I'm out the oven. It's the same with the muscular part of the steak. And when it relaxes, the juice that needs to escape goes, and the juice that's going to stay sets back in with the, with, with the strands of, of muscle. I got you. And, does it um, make sense? I talk in riddles sometimes. It does make sense. It makes okay. a lot of sense, particularly when you have a sort of analogy of throwing yourself into the oven. I know, a few people getting excited yeah, I, I, there, yeah. I, I, I get what you mean. The, 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 the feed with Michael going crazy now, like that, like, can we do it? Stick is that, in, is that a in. destination? <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> nice. Ryan in the oven. Okay, so um, I think we're coming out with this now. We're looking pretty good. And um, yeah, looking at the, 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 the timer, those are ready. So onto the bed. Oh yeah. Come on. 
Yeah. And then have, rest. A, have a whiff oh, of it yeah. straight away. Mm. Whiff, waft, sniff. Well, the, 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 the heat is actually opening up all the, um, the, the, the sort of the, the, the aroma, the flavors turn, of the... Turn that pepper around a little bit in there. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. Okay. It's a nice one, isn't it? I, I like today. It's really focused all on the meat and we've got it all going. Okay. And now um, you've got another minute on there and bavette. Yeah, so let's get that bavette in. And again, minute, probably a minute each side on this bavette. We just want to heat it through. Um, yeah, amazing. Love and that. What are you going to do with that marinade at the end? Is that just going to fizzle off or will you? What, this, this butter? Yeah, will you put well, that back it's, into there? it's been marinated. So it's done. It, yeah, and a little bit of a similar garnish to this, but yeah. with, with butter. Okay. And then it's going to cook in there again, burn a little bit more. That burning, that aggressiveness is going to give that asado flavour that we're looking yeah. for. And it's just going to add to it. So just a quick question then on marinades. If you're marinating raw meat in a marinade, yeah. can you then use that marinade again at the end? You have to cook it. You have to cook it out yeah. first. Yeah, okay. so none of this is touched raw meat. So for example, with, with pork, for example, I like some lemon peel, some rosemary, some smashed garlic. I'll then put it under the pork when I roast it, or I'll put it into the pot roast that I'm cooking with. So yeah, that, the, in short, yes. Yeah. But make sure you cook it through. This is my worried face. Ryan, it's my worried face, this. Why is that? I'm just looking at your dessert and it's just giving a little <laughs> bit of Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's going. And I'm just looking at the clock thinking, are we going to get this cook-along finished before that puppy goes over? Let's see. I need to stop talking. <laughs> I need to stop talking. Let's get a little bit of marinade on here. So let, let's let those rest. And actually, just before we do that, let's pop it on here. Let's look at that bounce. Ooh, look yeah. at the bounce. That's a beautiful kind yeah. of rare there now. Let's that's do this together. Let's poke the meat. <laughs> Let's do it, Charlie. So there, that's a rare and the thickest part. No, it's straight yeah. in the middle. Yeah, so that's rare. So bouncing back, which means it's yeah. cooked, but that's definitely a rare. And then go a little bit out there. Yeah, Medium. That's yeah, and then come down here. Yeah. Quite tight. Well done. And that's because it's a uh, well done, Charlie. Thank you, well sir. Done. Well, 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 well cooked. Perfect. There we go. So let that do all of its stuff. So that's another minute. Let's do another minute on the other side. Don't worry about the colour. Perfect. We're getting aggressive. Getting aggressive with that. And we're almost at that time to start plating. Yeah, let's do it. I tell you what, let's start focusing on that. Let's keep the knives very close because we're going to need those. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I'm only going to give this. It's had about, it's had an extra 30 seconds on one side. I'm going to take that off now. So you're happy there. Just put that on that. I am, yeah. It's already <laughs> cooked. We just wanted to heat it through a little bit. Don't waste Don't flavor. Waste. Okay, so that's Never what waste. on there. I hope you got that on the mic. The moment. Great. Plunk. There we go. Straight <laughs> off the barbecue. Sound effects are free, guys. Don't worry. We didn't spend too much of the budget on that. So, okay. steaks there. We're going to plate that absolutely uh, beautifully in a minute on the big plate, if you'd like to pass that over. And also, Charlie, if I could have the plate in your other hand. So that's the okay. steak. Steak plate. So, yep. Yeah. I'll pop that there for a minute. And this is for the potatoes. Potato plate. Now, these potatoes. The thing is, cooking in seawater, they're going to penetrate the potato. Just have one of those. That's extraordinary. They've sort of um, crusted up almost like a sort of a, a, a jacket potato would. Exactly. Who doesn't like a jacket potato? Oh, yeah. Into it. Mmm. And now... Oh, I love a good jersey. Now do it with that. Now with this. This garlic, guys, sorry to, for eating in my mouth full. It's stinging. Whoa. Boom. Bang. Mm. And it's meant to be like that. It's meant to be stinging, it's meant to be electric, it's meant to be like, bang, where's the steak? I'm ready. Wow. Yeah. Garlic feed, fear. I tell you. Garlic fear. That's what's in your eyes. Let's, let's plate these. That is pokey. Every chef I ever met said, never straight out the pan, use a spoon. This is for you. Yeah. So there we go. Nothing wrong with a bit of straight out the pan, as long as you make it look good. Slight crystallization, uh, crystallization of the salt. Mm. Absolutely incredible. Looks delicious. The mojo verde. Let's, um, let's plate this. I'm going to turn my central heating off because I'm roasting. <laughs> the steak is done. Barbecue gone. Let's just kind of like put a little bit of this on here. Oh, yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's, it's awesome. naughty. It's cut through the fat so, on the So too. Tower of Pisa are about to go any minute, which I like. I'm just slowing everything down a little bit. Not really. Tower of Pisa. So there's your potatoes. Rio Halios cooked in salt water. Mm. We have a mojo verde. We've got a bit of potato hanging around on there. Um, mojo verde, ready to go. Beautiful palm salad. We'll come to the meat in a minute. Let's get the sausages. 
sausages out. Is it going really, Charlie? It looks like it's on. It's going somewhere, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely going south, down to Argentina, hope, Argentina, hopefully. Okay. Whoa. Oh, the bangers look really good. The smell coming out of there is in insane. Let's go. Let's, um, let's go. Let's do this. So, actually, I'm going to slice these. So you should let a sausage rest as well a little bit, you know. People don't just go straight in. We're just going to go straight in. Whatever. Let's do it. Asbestos. Is it asbestos hands? That's what we say. So slice these up just so that it's. Remind me, this is. Whoop. <laughs> that, banging in the kitchen. That, yeah, banging in the kitchen. Beef sausage, a little bit of pork in there. Lots of wonderful herbs. Curated yeah. by Rocket and HG Walter. Yeah, HG Walter Legends. Yeah. So the sausage goes in there as well. You can feel the stickiness. Yeah, I love that. It's held yeah. together brilliantly well. Yeah, it does. It's got a lot of work went into this. We don't mm. mess around. We don't wing stuff. We get it right. Like I said, we're taking to Argentina because so we want to be there. We want to live the moment through food. What we can do is not being there ourselves. We can take you there with food. And that's exactly what we're doing. Let's swap these over. Let's yeah. go straight into Apicania. So I'll tell you what. Let's pop that over there. Let's get this. So this big piece of naughtiness can just sit there. Yeah. This is what they do. They have whole whole peppers dancing around. So out with the bavette. Yeah, out with it. Okay, and it's important that you slice this okay. in the correct. So how do you tell? You just stretch it. Yeah, okay. you see the strands? They're yeah. going that way. And you want to so go we against wanna, that. And we want to go thin against that. Thin against it. And you're yep. going at an angle with a bread knife. Yep. And he goes. This is delicious. This looks delicious. Are you looking at it thinking? I am sort of. This is a I'm lot of meat. Of, yeah, I'm sort of drooling actually. It's incredible. Things. And you're like, why, why, why three pieces of steak? Well, because we want the, you want to have the experience, the asado experience, which is beautiful. Oh. And then with beautiful. the hands straight up. Look at that blushing, perfectly blushing, rosy meat. That is mega. absolutely delicious. Turn that over just for the crowd. Yeah. Oh. Okay, which one are you going to pick? Dreamy. See which one went right. <laughs> so no, I think this one's nice. This one's feeling good. Yeah, both feeling good. good. They're both feeling pretty good. So here's the picanha. The now right. this one as well. You always want to look with the grain. The grain's going that way. Yeah. So I'm going to slice across. Okay. Yeah. So across the grain. Yeah, making Same a mess, aren't I? But if you're on a barbecue, you're making a mess. It's all just going into the coals. You can see it now. That's the difference. I'll put this one aside for the crew. That'll be now. I would maybe give this, bad. yeah, a slight more, a little bit of a rest. A little bit more of a rest. Please be cooked perfectly. Please be cooked perfectly. A lot of pressure on Chef Ryan at this moment in time. So straight across the grain in a slightly That's different sort of cut. Inch, an inch thick. Yep. No, no, half an inch thick. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is, because I'm, I'm a bit of a smarty pants, you want some of that resting juice there, because I'd like to rest it a little bit longer. Okay. And you just like to fan it out a little bit, and as well, with it being a rump. Nice kind of, you can see the nice pinkiness here. And it eats well when you can see the texture. Don't be scared of cooking this a little bit more towards medium. Some cuts deserve mm. that, and picanha is definitely one of them. So absolutely, I keep saying deliciano. Is that, an, uh, is that just a made up word? Or is that <laughs> a really bit Italian, think, I really isn't think it? Yeah. it is. Deliciano, yeah. <laughs> it works for the Argentinian, cook along only. Okay, so let's get that off there. Yeah. And not forgetting, Charlie, the most incredible, incredible bit. Where's the resting tray? <gasps> ah. The crime has been Sorry, committed. Chef. I just popped it We've got side. about 20 seconds on this before we need to go. So again, just because we're going to utilize this, just try. Have you got your spoon? I've got a spoon. Get your spoon. Have a little try of this from the beef juice as well. There's vinegar in there. Don't want to go too mm. big on it. But you want that over the picanha. That moment. That's it, that's the gravy. You made it as well without knowing. That's it. That's Absolutely it. perfect. Chimichurri. You've got the chimichurri sausage, which is kind of like playing straight into uh, the flavors of chimichurri, but it's a whole different concept. Chimichurri over this one. Oh. Argentina, if you're watching, call me. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for you. And there we go. Oh, wow. Okay, Sardo. come on, let's get the board out of the way. Beautiful. Let's put the meat in the middle. Let's do it. Um, and let's just have the Ryan recap. I'm really excited about this. So you should be. I'm super excited with a lot of things, but this one, this is a real, oh, come on. Okay, let's get the, get the weapons out of the way, because they are of choice they are really going gone. a headshot. How are we looking? Um, would you like to move in the, uh, the Leaning Tower? Because I'm, I'm, I'm too afraid of going, going in. terribly wrong. Going in. 
It's looking good, Chef Ryan. And there we have it. Go on, it tell is, us quickly. What's it going is a on? main course with a dessert. We have got the most incredible guys. Paleta, asado, assiette, plate, feast. Like never before, beautiful, three cuts of meat, starting with the picanha, the bavet with the chimichurra, and the beef pork chimichurra sausage. Romero pepper, just because we can. It looks delicious. Rio Halios, down south, seawater, beautiful Jersey Royals, touching on the English season, but staying and being everything Argentina could offer. Finishing with, for the main course with the sides, we've got the palm, compressed watermelon, coriander, chorizo, toasted avocado, just because we can. What are we going to call this? <laughs> it's a beauty. Pizza, collaboration of two of the most famous desserts in Argentina. Torta, pest litos, rogel, torta, delicious, get stuck in. Thank you. Yeah, um, wash those <laughs> down, wash those down with Tom Gilby's delicious um, Malbec, Please whichever do. one you chose, or perhaps you tried both, but they're both utterly delicious, so wash them down with that wonderful, wonderful steak. Uh, well, Ryan, well done, congratulations. Thank um, you. Another triumph. Um, and what a masterclass that has been in, in, in steak cookery. Amazing. Well, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed as much as I have. Enjoy. Yeah, certainly, certainly, certainly. Amazing. So um, on that note, folks, um, enjoy your dinner. But before you do, take some photographs of your wonderful food and get posting. Um, because, of course, the winning photographs judged by Ryan will get a free box to um, a complimentary box to our next destination uh, in a couple of weeks time, which is up the 3rd of June. Wow. Um, and we are going to have the delight of Marianne Lum joining us in the Cook's Tour kitchen. She's amazing. She is, I'm excited for that one. She is incredibly talented and she is known in the industry as the queen of souffles or the souffle queen, should we say. We so that is what you folks are going to be learning at home is how to make the wonderful, wonderful souffle amongst other things. So join us for a soiree en Provence on the 3rd of June. Can't wait for that. Amazing. Me too. That would be super special. So um, on that note, thank you very, very much for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.